You're going to kill somebody, you better do it yourself. Uh, someone trying to hire people to do it. I read that in a book somewhere. Why on earth would you run around as a celebrity and try to hire people to kill folks for you? Nine times out of ten, it's an informant and it's made up. Besides, why would you want to kill somebody? Because these rich people, the, the, these, these high-profile stars and folks, constantly are trying to get people killed and do get people killed routinely because they're on such power trips, they think they're invincible. Well, they're they, need, they need to follow O.J.'s example. Huh? Yeah, O.J. did the job himself. Dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. And then they ran on race to cover it up, and that didn't work still. I was told by a LAPD detective that it was really somebody else in the family, but that OJ took the fall to cover it up. People do anything for their kids. Okay, let's just stop right there. Uh, low profile. New York City prosecutor, we're going back to Watson, low-profile New York City prosecutor emerges as contender to be first black woman U.S. Attorney General. Well, I, I don't care if she's a black woman, but what I do care about is that she comes from a very corrupt area in New York uh, where U.S. attorneys have been caught doing all sorts of political persecution of Republicans, Libertarians, Christians, churches. In fact, I've seen this lady's name before going after tea parties. So the big news here, this is from Fox News, and that she's being looked at. If our writers want to dig into her, I remember her office uh, being uh, mentioned in some of the tea party pro-lifer uh, harassment of 501c3s and things. And it's right next door to the one that went after Dinesh D'Souza. And I think her office aided in that. I'm going from memory, but look into it. Look into it. She's a she's a attack dog uh, from what I know. So let's research that. She's an under-the-radar contender to become the first black woman to head the Justice Department. Loretta Lynch rarely holds a news conference, does interviews or gives speeches in her current job as U.S. attorney in Brooklyn. Oh, think U.S. attorneys in Brooklyn might be a little uh, dirty under the fingernails? I don't know. Think, think Al Capone might have been a gangster? I don't know. But the lack of a paper trail on Lynch hasn't kept her from emerging in recent weeks. That's why they want her. Perfect puppet. As one of only a handful of people still under consideration by White House to replace the outgoing Eric Holder. I don't know what Fox is talking about. There's no paper trail on this lady. I remember that district office going after people. All right, we're going to dig into her, give you more on that. You know, Paul, it's really scary, <laughs> not just that our own government, you mentioned other Forbes articles and AP articles saying they expect over 100 Ebola cases. Obama's getting people ready saying, oh, I expect to see some more, but it's no big deal. We get demonized saying that clearly they're covering it up. That is so newsworthy, Paul that they're disappearing people. Notice the hospital didn't challenge the medical doctor we had on. They didn't say he was a liar or we were wrong. They just they just demonized InfoWars and, and said that we're horrible people, but, but didn't counter any of the information. Uh, and they had White House-connected groups, like Media Matters, attack us. Will we lose credibility when more Ebola cases show up, or will they lose credibility, Paul? Well, I mean, this is the thing, isn't it, Alex? We talked to Zach Taylor, the Border Patrol veteran, who said they were disappearing people. And that's the point that Scott Gottlieb made in his editorial for Forbes about a week ago. He said that once it hits Latin America, then, you know, all bets are off, basically. Quote, as we have seen with the anxiety engendered by just a few isolated cases, if we were to have a dozen or more cases in a major USC, it would have a substantial impact on our economic and social life. And he's talking about the immigrants coming in from Latin America with Ebola, which is interesting because there's a story up on Drudge right now. Amazing story. A beach in Gran Canaria. Basically, this boatload of people from Sierra Leone with Ebola symptoms just arrived on the beach. They dumped them out of the boat and they were sat around on the beach as these nudist beachgoers passed <laughs> and fled. And then the government left them there for seven hours, not knowing what to do. So you've got immigrants just turning up on beaches in Gran Canaria with Ebola symptoms from Sierra Leone. And as the former FDA official said in Forbes, that could just as easily happen uh, coming into America from Mexico. 
Well, that's what the head of Southcom said months after we said it. And then we were attacked, and so was the head of Southcom for saying the obvious. That's another thing. The government can't coordinate its bull. You've got this czar who orders the media to shut up. They go along with it. But uh, the police and, the, and, and Northcom and other groups are not going along with the cover-up. I mean, I don't care what city it is. Dallas, New York City, the police aren't going along with the cover-up. Northcom's not going along with it. The head of Southcom is not going along with it. Uh, what does that mean? It shows Obama is not, is not in control, which is actually a good thing. Yeah, and remember they also told the 9-11 dispatchers in New York not to mention cases of Ebola. But what worries me, you mentioned Ron Klein before, who of course said there were too many people in Africa, he's an advocate of population reduction, is the fact that this story, which I put out probably about 10 days ago now, NGO envisages global one-child policy pandemics to solve overpopulation. And this paper, which I read in full, was edited by Paul Ehrlich, who of course is a close ally, scientific ally of John P. Holdren, the White House science czar. He co-authored EcoScience with Holdren, which of course advocated a planetary regime to enforce draconian methods of population reduction. And if you read this paper, it's absolutely shocking because they basically make the point that a new global war, a new type of Spanish flu, and a new pandemic which kills 6 billion people over the next three decades or so is not going to be enough. They lament the fact that 6 billion dead people when the population gets to about 9 billion by 2050 is not going to be enough uh, for what they want. So they advocate openly a global one child policy as is instituted in China, which of course- But that's okay, Paul, because these people are just- Paul, that's okay. These people are just kooks. They're not White House science czars. They don't sit on the National Academy of Sciences. They don't sit on the major boards of the Fortune 100. They're not running global policy. Oh, wait a minute. They are running global policy from geoengineering to immigration to the Ebola response. And as you said, this isn't eco-science written 40 years ago by John P. Holdren and Paul R. Ehrlich saying this this was written this year they are saying the same thing but saying a global war is needed and now mainstream news is saying a new cold war is beginning with russia yeah but that's the thing alex they a new global war and a pandemic which kills six billion that's not enough for them six billions not enough dead people because it will only get the population down to about five billion the global one child policy if it's properly enforced which you know in China means kidnapping women off the streets, force drugging them, beating them half to death, giving them an abortion, a forced abortion, then sterilizing them. That's, that's what they want for everyone. Sure. That will get the population down to about 3 billion. So 4 billion down on what it is now. That's, that, even that's not enough. If you read the actual paper, they want it, they want it down to 1 to 2 billion. Those are, the, those are the ideal figures for global population. And by the way, we have a lot of TV viewers and radio listeners out there. Because again, if you're a new radio listener, we also simulcast at Infowars.com forward slash show, PrisonPlanet.com forward slash show. We'll put your article from a few weeks ago up on screen, and then we'll click through to the actual public document uh, put out by the former White House science czar who works with the current White House science czar, uh, John P. Holdren, uh, Paul R. Ehrlich. Give folks for radio audience out there the headline on your story so they can go read it for themselves. The headline is NGO envisages global one-child policy pandemics to solve overpopulation. And that's the National Academy of Sciences. They published the paper. They, they put it behind a paywall so like you have to pay $10 just to read it, which they know that the vast majority of people are not going to do. I read it and it, it says that the quote sustainable number of people for the world is one to two billion people. So that's that's, you know, at least six billion down on current figures. And by the time we get to nine billion in 2050, you know, it's, it's seven billion people dead, but not as a result of pandemics because they actually modeled it. And they, they do a nice cute little graphic with a skull and crossbones with six billion dead people mapped out on a chart. And it shows that it only gets population down to about five billion, which is not enough for them.